Hello, hello, and welcome, welcome once again to another edition of AMB Animation. Right, today I'm doing something different. I'm live. I'm live because I'm being lazy. <laughs> well, um, I got a, a nice message the other day. Well, just this morning, actually, not the other day. And it was quite a long message. Um, hey, Dylan Draws, how are you doing? Dila Dilaxia, hello, how are you? Ryan Bowles, how are you, sir? Yeah, so um, what I'm doing today is I'm going to answer this message because I get this message a lot. And it's what I think is I just think having this video, I'll be able to just... Um, send people who send me this message to this video and it'll kind of like hopefully hey aaron aaron aox how are you doing bud it'll be able to um help them and help all help anybody else with this concern out it's a typical question that i get about animation and it's happening a lot it's happening a lot since we've started real animated training since there's been a host of other animation courses online animation courses out there as well by by good people as well i might add um and uh also drawing classes and all those kind of things and you know the the internet has been a game changer uh it's been a game changer for for everybody and everybody's having to adjust and people are now thinking about their futures uh you know and i'm getting a lot of people who are actually currently on animation degrees showing a great interest in real animator training um because they've, they've they've some of them have seen the new face the the global hey pedro red fox how are you doing some of them have seen the new uh gr global facebook community group and uh, they've been seeing how well the people the real animator training library uh students are doing on those that some of them are coming on youtube and they're seeing those things and uh, they're also seeing that we're attracting professionals uh, as well so they're naturally quite curious and i got this question uh, i might not mention the person's name because they morning charlene how are you i might not mention the person's name because you know they sent me the message but i'm gonna read it and i'm gonna answer it and i'm gonna direct this video to them and then hopefully if there's time i'll answer some questions that i get in the chat as well Right, so it says questions about Real Animated Training Library. Well, it's not just about Real Animated Training Library. It's about lots of things um, that are just generally applicable, library or not. Um, so it says, hello, AMB. I've been following your streams on YouTube for the last two weeks. and I'm just so impressed by your knowledge and more importantly, your willingness to share that knowledge there are two YouTubers to slash teachers uh, that I have been considering pulling the trigger on their classes. Your Real Animator Training Library, so that's me, and somebody called, she, um, and Broco's Anatomy Course. I know of the guy, but I, I, I've i never, I've always, in my mind, I've always thought Broco, but it's, it says Broco, so um, uh, I hope I pronounced that correctly. Broco's Anatomy Courses. I'm currently going to a university for a master's. Now, this is where it gets interesting. Morning, Dino Wolf. Hope you're doing well, sir. Um, this is where it gets interesting. I'm currently going to a university for a master's in both illustration and animation. Okay? So this person's uh, doing a master's degree um, in both illustration and animation. I'm tempted to stop and do independent training online. I'm already in debt, so at this point, even stopping my attendance at the university now won't soften the debt much. It's more about wasting time than money. Now that's a very, this person seems to me to be extremely clued up because time, you know, how do we make money? The more time we have, the more money we can make, Money is a side effect, okay? Time is more important. So this person, Travis, the Insanimate, how are you doing? Um, so time is very important. So this person's pretty clued up. Um, I'm sorry about the debt and all that, but uh, 
It's more about wasting time than money. I know what I want to do with illustration and animation. I can see it clearly. I just don't have the skill to execute it yet. So again, this person is showing some real high level enlightenment from me, because if you can see it clearly, what you want to do, and you've actually visualized it, that's, all, that's half the battle over. So, so uh, this is a really good message. I just don't have the skill to execute it yet. As long, at least not what I am envisioning, envisioning and spending energy on classes unrelated to animation or having a week to do an assignment and not having time to fix your mistakes or make changes based on critiques because you have to move on to the next week's project. It can be frustrating. I understand deadlines. I am a hard worker, but for as much as I am paying, I sometimes feel I just want to stop and absorb what we are covering. Practically bathe myself in that knowledge before moving on. I want to really get it because I'm becoming passionate about it. And maybe I continue my degree and, and do this training in the summer on the side. Again, it's not about the money, it's about the time. So this person is pretty clued up with what's going on in their life. And it's not too dissimilar to, to what's happened. I wonder if she's popped in the chat. It might be a bit early for her. I think um, it's it's about um, four in the UK, but I'm not sure what time it is in the States. But this person is reminding me of somebody who I've been interacting with in the Real Animator Training Growth Development and Progress Group, who's actually inspired my latest uh, Real Animator Freeview series, which is the... Uh, the Little Red Riding Hood series I've been doing. She, her name was as Amberly. She has been uh, attending an animation course and she's been posting uh, her projects on the wall in that group. And she's frustrated about the amount of time she's been given to make a short story of Little Red Riding Hood and how she has to knock it all out. And she's feeling rushed. And, and um, she's also, um, uh, highlighted some concerns about uh, that she almost feels like she wants to leave her degree as well. So it's, it's, I find it like it's a strange coincidence. Mute Midori Animations, hello, how are you? Good to see you. I find it's a strange coincidence that I'm not only uh, interacting with Amberly in the group, but I'm also speaking to getting a message from this person here. Now, what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to I'm going to tread on caution because the last thing I want to do, and I said this to Amberly as well, is encourage anybody to make a, a, a jump gut decision. Because obviously, when you've invested in an animation course, uh, it's considerably a lot more money than what you're getting from online courses by from people like me or some of my alternatives out there. Um, we are we offer a really a reasonable, uh, you know, prices as far as I understand, but these degree courses, you've invested a lot of time and money and to just jump out of it, 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 take, it you're gonna, it's going to need a lot of sitting down and discussing with your nearest and dearest and really people around you who have your best interests. Of course, I have your best interests at heart, but how, how well do I know you? You know, I've got so many people online who are interacting with me. I try to do my best by them, but obviously sit down and come to these decisions uh, with the people, with your inner circle around you who will really be able to um, be, be giving that extra look out for you uh, with your best interests at heart. Um, and then obviously follow your gut. So um, she's going to come on to a question in a minute, but I just feel that I have to give this background as I'm reading her questions because it's just something that's just recurring so much um, when, I, when I'm making, when, uh, in, in recent times as, as we've been doing this thing. Um, so she says, um, maybe I continue my degree and do this training in the summer or on the side again. It's not about the money, it's about time. So my question, my question, if you don't mind sharing your opinion because you also have a degree, 
how has a degree benefited you or has it given you any advantage? If it hadn't, can you briefly explain why? I know in your bio you said you felt it hadn't or rather it took more time to learn something than when you began working in the industry. Okay, now she goes on to other things. There's so many questions, so let me just deal with this first because this is uh, specifically about my degree uh, and what I feel it did to me. Now, I have to stress uh, to this person, I'm borderline 42 years old now, so my degree and times and the industry has really changed a lot. It's really changed a lot. So I'm going to share with you what I feel about my degree. And some of you know what I feel about it already, who followed me for a long time. And I'm, I'm going to reshare that. I'm going to share with you about what I think about it. But it doesn't necessarily ring true. I don't know because times have changed. It's now less about the artist and it's more about the, it's more about the, the the software now it's more about because as the more students who i i talk to always join my library saying we were taught software we weren't taught the stuff that you're teaching we were just taught software i'm getting loads of people from the motion graphics side and they're already in work so obviously maybe their degree has helped them i don't know um but getting on to my degree, yes, I did do an animation degree. And in the short answer is it's bloody useless, worthless. It didn't help in the slightest. Um, there's another guy out there uh, who who's pretty big on the tube. He's from UK. Uh, well, God, I forgot. I forgot Harry Partridge. Harry Partridge. I believe he went to the same university that I went to and don't quote me on this go and ask him um, uh, maybe in a message maybe he won't be so vocal about it as me but I think he thinks that the YouTube uh, not the YouTube that the degree were, is, is, is a waste of time at that place as well okay um, he thinks it's a, it's a I, I could be wrong I also worked with another um, person when I was working on uh, a project called there, there's these American toys called Little People. I think we have them in the UK as well. Uh, they were planning Little People. I don't know what happened to it. I haven't seen it been released a couple of years ago, a few years ago now, not a couple. I've been doing training library. I was very boring on, on, on the Little People and I met another story artist uh, from the UK um, and we got talking and he was from the same university. He's younger than me, but he's from the same university that I'm from. And he saw some of my videos and he said, hey, you went there. I went, yeah, I went there. He said, you were spot on about that place. He felt it was useless. He felt it was a worthless, useless waste of time. The guy who uh, I was working with, the art director on, on the latest, uh, on, on the movie that we've just come off, and some of you met him on on my stream the uh, the other day when we were talking about art direction and because he's an art director he's been a background painter art director and uh production designer for cartoon saloon uh other other independent animation projects and other companies um he gave you his bio in the in the in the video just go watch it and um you know, he went to the, he's three years younger than me. So we weren't, none of us met each other at these colleges, um, at the college. Uh, but he went to the same place I went to. And he got a degree in filmmaking, not animation. But he also told me that it was, and he told my audience that it was an absolute waste of time, that it was absolute rubbish. We didn't learn anything. Um, and just rather than getting into the details about why it was a waste of time, um, I'm just going to tell you, when I came out of the my animation course, okay, um, I basically went straight into the industry with a, and, and got a job. But it wasn't because of uh, my degree. Of my, of my degree. What happened was, is as I was doing that degree, um, 
the school teachers, uh, the the teachers would always tell me, you know, you, this 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 kind of film you're making is just a sellout. It's all commercial. It's commercialized. You know, they 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 thought they were teaching high art, and they just. They, they would just dismiss it, and they would be quite, quite look quite down on American animation, actually, because, which is what inspired me the most. Uh, American commercial feature animation. They would say, "Oh, maybe in America you'd get high marks, but here in Britain we demand a different film." Or so. Just rubbish like that. Um, and they were very, very. Maybe it's a reason which which I'm a little bit. Um, uh, frustrated with 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 left the left side of things because that maybe it, it scarred me because they were just so overtly left in that course that they just any anybody who tried to do anything that was uh, commercial or or industry based you were a sellout you were a capitalist you were a this you were a that so I I just had a very frustrating time on that course and um, I just I just ignored it and I just bought the Disney animation The Illusion of Life and uh, my brother would be going to um, prior to to my going on that course my brother met James Baxter and a couple of other uh, big uh, industry animators Richard Burdham and all those people who knew Richard Williams and all those kind of stuff he would go and he would uh, meet them and ask them what you would need to do and Sometimes uh, my friend would tag along who teaches at the escape course now. And I was just too young then, so I wasn't allowed to join them. They were trying to get into animation. And what happened was is I used to just listen in and I would ask my brother to ask James Baxter questions and stuff like that. So uh, they, they would tell my brother uh, what, you, what was required to put on an animation showreel to get a job. So I just geared my showreel and my my three years. I said, okay, I got three years in animation school. Uh, fuck the teachers. Who cares? Forget about that. Nobody cares what they think. They're basically. I had to, I had to think in my mind. They're losers. They failed in animation. That's why they're teaching on this course. So let me just basically. Uh, I want to be in that. So let me just basically focus on what I need to do to get in that and listen to the people who are actually in the industry. So I geared my uh, showreel to that and. We had a college screening. Um, I think only two people were, were, were picked out out of that thing um, in the college screening. And I was uh, hired to either go on to be an assistant animator on a movie being made at the time called Christmas Carol. Um, it, awful looking thing. <laughs> and uh, there was an even more awful uh, TV series where they hired me as an animator. So I just went, oh, I'll be the animator. Now, the reason I'm telling you about this is, believe it or not, my degree was brought up in the interview and it was brought up in the interview because the disdain that the people in that uh, animation studio uh, at the time, there, there used to be this huge animation uh, series in Britain called Captain Pugwash. I don't know if it traveled in the, in the, um, in the US. But it was a big thing in, in, in Britain. And uh, they were really well known for that. They were called John Gary Animations. And they basically said to me, you went there. I went there as well. And then we all went for a, for a, to the pub afterwards. And we spent the whole time laughing at about how rubbish and how useful, useless that animation degree was. And how, the only reason I, I did it was to keep my parents happy because I'm obviously from a, an Asian background and, and the idea in, in a lot of these culture cultures and communities is, is you must study, you must have a degree. We don't care what it is. You know, we'd rather you do something like maths and science. But I was fortunate my parents were a little bit more, uh, how can we say, liberal. Um, they, they just, they supported me. I'm so thankful for that. But they said, uh, degree, degree. So I said, okay, degree. But they don't know anything about it. So I used to tell them, yeah, it's all great, but, but I'll be going there. I'll, I'll just be ignoring everything the teacher's saying, saying, okay, I'll buy myself three years to get some skills, to teach myself from the illusion of life, from books like Hallis and Bachelor, um, the timing for animation, John Hallis, and those kind of books. Uh, there was no survival kit when I was in school. Um, 
So uh, uh, anatomy books, things like that. Those are the kinds of things that I was uh, working at and learning. So for me, the animation degree was, you know, it was, it wasn't completely worthless. Okay. One of my friends, uh, he's got a YouTube channel. He teaches, uh, he now teaches, he's directed uh, stuff like Pingu. I don't know. Again, I don't know if this stuff travels to America, but he's worked at Aardman. He's directed stuff like Pingu. He's, uh, he's been pretty big in, uh, in model animation. He went and he was in the same year as me. And he was a, he is a super talent at stop motion animation. I've got so much respect for that guy. You know, um, he, his, he, he basically really had, had a, a genius in him in my opinion, because when I met him, he was making his own films and directing his own projects. His name's Ollie. Um, he does his own little thing now. He's more moved into 2D. Um, whatever uh, floats his boat. When I say 2D, it's the, the guy, but I, may, I knew him mainly when he was doing the, the, modern, uh, the 3D stop motion animation. I think he's got a YouTube channel. Check it out. I think it's called Ollie, Ollie, Ollie or some, something like that. And he is, uh, he is an absolute genius uh, uh, when, I, when we were at school. And he was bullied almost by those teachers. They, they, would, they would just go, they would just dismiss his work. Um, and, and, you know, I think he will back me up in saying that, that this animation course was just rubbish, useless, not worth anything, you know? Um, so all these people, like my friend who I've just mentioned, me, uh, who, who is, uh, we've all made it in the industry and we've all done good things. He's gone on to do uh, work at Ardman, direct shows. Um, I went to, at the time, I went to a place called the Surrey Institute of Art and Design. Yeah, Bob the Builder, Postman. But yeah, they, he did all those. He did, he worked on all of those. Um, so, um, yeah, so I went to a place called the Surrey Institute of Art and Design. It's called something else now, the University of some, you know, whatever. Um, so basically, um, yeah, and I went on off and I worked for Universal Pictures, 20th Century Fox, uh, Sony Pictures. You know, one of my sec, one of my, my third job out after coming off that degree was on Adam Sandler's Eight Crazy Nights. So... But, and then my other friend, he's an art director, background artist for Cartoon Saloon. You know, uh, I, I, there's Harry Partridge, I believe. There's all these other people I'm naming you, these successful people who have really made something of themselves in animation in spite of this wretched place, in spite of this place. I'm not rubbishing the place. The place, maybe it's done some good. Maybe it's upped its game now. Maybe because the climate has changed, it's helping people get jobs now. I don't know. And this is what's leading me off now that that was my story. That was my story from my time. Okay. Now, as I've been working um, in the industry and as I've been doing uh, the... AMB real animator training, but even even my 20 years in the industry, I never personally met somebody who worked on a project that I worked on that was using their degree. You know who the most genius person I've ever met? The person who blew me away when I met him, and he still blows me away today, was a, is a guy called Alberto, I can't pronounce his surname, but he's, he's really big in Hollywood right now. He works on Into the Spider-Verse and stuff like that. Um, you know, I think he was an art director. Not only can the guy paint like a, a god, the, the man it was, in his early 20s was an absolutely amazing... He was animating us all under the table, you know? We were sitting there working on a... Yeah, that's it. Megalo. That's it. I, I used to call him... We used to call him Rabish because he used to all the time say, Ah, Rabish. He's Rabish. You know, me and my friends, we, we all would laugh when, you know... We knew him when he was just getting started. 
We knew him when he was just getting started. We were working on this German feature called The Jester Till. Uh, it had the voice of Lee Evans. I don't think it ever got released in, outside of Germany. I, you know, I, I don't know. We were working on the German feature called The Jester Till. And this young guy was one of the animators on there with us. And we were all kind of like going over to the pencil tester when he was shooting his stuff, thinking, bloody hell, <laughs> bloody hell, that, this guy is something else. And he would look at it and go, ah, it's rubbish. You know, <laughs> you know so that's how, he got, that's how he got the nickname. But he, even when I knew him then, he was somebody who was really clued up. And, and he's just gone and soared with wings and really taken his, taken everything. But, but I don't think anything had to do with his degree. None of the youngsters I met ever showed us stuff that they were doing with their degrees. None of them. They were all, you, you, you know, hired for their ability and hired for their skills. Um, but this is the thing. This leads me on to this very important point, okay? This very important thing is, is the whole reason I've started Real Animator Training now is animation today, okay, with the exception, I'm not going to make this out because the last thing I want to do, I don't want to be one of those people because when we, when we have products, Real Animator Training Library is a product, I've been, I obviously had to learn about sales and marketing, but I like to, my branding, my branding is real, okay? And I want to be real. So I'm going to come and tell this. I don't want to be one of those people that try to market to you and tell you things as if, in a way, as if to try and make it seem as if somehow the option that I'm offering you is the better option by using these subliminal cues like urgency and, you know, comparisons and running things down all the time. So when I say that I feel the quality in animation has gone, and that's why I've started Real Animation Animated Training, that is true, but it isn't true in terms of feature high level stuff like people like Alberto that I was just talking to you about and those people on Spider-Verse and all that, they're still the, the best of the best. Those guys, you know, there is no lapse in quality. These guys are hired and they would have been hired back in the days of Beauty and the Beast and Aladdin and all the big hand-drawn films as well. So even though I don't personally rate Pixar films and I don't personally enjoy Blue Sky films or those things, I'm not going to uh, try and deceive my audience's members, some of who put a lot of trust and uh, belief in the things that I say and say that, oh, they're all shit, you know, they don't, you know, they're just the best of a bad bunch. No, many of them can outdraw me with their eyes closed. Many of them, are, some of these guys are extremely, uh, you know, unbelievable artists. So when I say that the quality in animation has gone, it has not, you know, you got to think of it like a, a beautiful mountain where the top is still, you know, the peak is still touching the heavens, you know. So these guys are still, you know, right there at the top. So their quality hasn't gone from there. When I say the quality has gone, I'm talking about the whole 2D world in general, the whole 2D industry, the kind of projects being released at, on, at a television standard, the feature, uh, the, the 2D features being released, the 2D products being released, that's what I mean. As we come down in the industry, the TV series, if you look at, for example, DuckTales and those Disney TV cartoons didn't necessarily have great animation. They didn't necessarily have uh, strong animation. They had pretty weak animation. It was animated on the cheap in... Uh, Eastern countries, but they had strong layout poses and the illustrations of the character were strong. They followed a line of action. They weren't designed to work in software. That's when I say the quality is going. People don't know how to draw anymore. People, you know, people are getting hired 
who don't know how to draw anymore at that level. People are getting hired who can't do things uh, the way they used to be able to uh, do at that level. That's why I started Real Animator Training, because I don't care about those people in the jobs. They're, they're already done. They're already, they're, you know, they're all right, Jack. What I care about is how it filters down and inspires you guys, the independents, the youngsters, all wanting to be animators. You see, you don't know any better. Many of you, grew, many, my daughter was born before any, after 2D had all died. So, you know, lots of people don't really understand just what proper or good or 2D is. And they're drawing, learning and drawing designs and they're moving away from anatomy and they're designing these blocks, simple shapes, crude little things, which were kind of appealing, but because they were designed for software. So that's why I'm doing what I'm doing. That's why I'm doing real animator training. Uh, that's, that's, what, that's what I mean when I say I'm, I'm making animation special again. I'm making drawing special again. That's what I mean. I don't mean that's to say that everybody, the, the, all those people are all shit. What I mean is, is that the standards have dipped. Automation is taking over animation. I'm sitting here looking at the phone, talking to you now. The time will come when I can flip a filter on my screen and you can see me doing a Pixar and all I'll have to do is start acting like a Pixar going, wait a minute, wait a minute. Oh, 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 oh. And then it'll really look like a piece of Pixar acting with a, with a, <laughs> with a Pixar character. The satirical eyebrow raise, the head wiggle, the the eye darts, the hunched back, and then the opening, you know, the closed pose and the opening pose, the, the wiggle, the take. You know, I'll just be doing all this and you'll just have a filter on the screen and that's how, maybe how the future of animation. Anybody will be able to do it. They've made it to the standard that anybody can do it at the push of a button with things like Go Animate. People make fun of it, but, but that's the way it's going. So how, how are we going to keep it? By making it special, by making, bringing humanity back into it, bringing humanity back into it. You know, everybody loves a home cooked meal. People are going to love a home, you know, a home, that, that human hand, that touch, that thing that makes it special. You know, in a world where we're getting more and more automated, it's the artists who are going to truly survive. That's what it's about. So why I'm mentioning that is your immediate question is, you seem to me to be somebody who's really passionate and interested about doing the work and doing the illustration and doing the drawing. If that's the case, then that's your priority. But in terms of your degree, I honestly don't know if a degree is a good or a bad thing because if you must learn the software, if you're getting software training on the degree and your prime directive is that you want a job, your prime directive is that you want a job, maybe the degree is a good thing. I don't know if a de I, I haven't met people who say their degree is what helped them get the job. But if you're getting the software training, maybe that's a good thing. Maybe some, you know, you uh, I can't personally answer that question. Uh, but what I do know, what I do know is, is that the majority of people who join Real Animator Training already have degrees and they've just come off degrees. And the majority of them are telling me, and they're from the States, they're telling me that their degrees have been a waste and that they weren't happy and that they're in debt. I've had people coming from CalArts joining my training library. I've had people coming from uh, what is it? You call it the Art Institute? I don't know what that is. I think it's some place in America uh, joining my training library. I've had people who have been, um, I've had even somebody coming from Animation Mentor applying and joining, asking about my training library. I don't know if they've joined yet. So I don't know if a degree is today going to give you the skills you want. But then again, the people who join the training library, they don't necessarily do it for a job because we've got people from the industry coming in. They do it because it's real animator training. They do it because they, they, they've got over the industry thing and they want to get the skills. They want to feel like a real animator. So we've got people who are actually in the industry. We've got, so we've got people who have been on the, uh, 
There's a course in London by a group called Escape. Now, Richard Williams' son is the head of the animation faculty there. Okay? We've got people who have come off that course coming on real animator training. So the thing is, is it's, it's, and that's a professional course that kind of guarantees people jobs because it's linked to the, we've got a huge CG uh, environment here, the frame store, the moving picture company. It deals with people. It puts you in those kind of workplaces there. Um, you know, th there's a, there's a huge CG community here in the, in, in the UK. So these people who are coming into my um, training system, they perhaps a little bit like you, they're more passionate about having the skills than having the, the, the software understanding or the work placement. So I don't, you know, you've, this is a long letter you've written me and I honestly don't want it to, um, I don't want you, I don't want to abuse the trust that you're putting into me by asking me this question, by just trying to make it a black and white thing of degree is bad. And yeah, join the real animated training library. It'll change your life. We've got this many people. Because ultimately, the real answer to this question is what do you want? Sit down and write it out what your specific goal is and what you want. If you, if anything of that involves making money from your animation or making money from your work, then perhaps prioritize the actions that you need to take to do that first, okay? Because training library is about skill, ability, and getting, getting good. OK, that doesn't necessarily mean job, money, income. OK, it, it, see, it could be, mean that thing. Back in the day, we used to believe that, but it's not necessarily the same thing. It's not necessarily the same thing. So I would like you to definitely consider that. That's an extremely... That's probably the, the meat and potatoes of this whole rambling talking that I've been going on for 37 minutes now. That's the thing I'd like, I, I think that the one major takeaway I'd like you to have from all of this talk is, is to sit down and work out really what it is what you want. If it's the skills, then obviously take action to get the skills. If it's job, income and money, and stability in through your artwork, then perhaps take some courses on promotion, marketing, financial uh, finance and stuff like that, and really uh, channel that towards your artwork, you know? Because that's how, that's how you're going to get the help, okay? No amount of, you could go through the entire training library and you could come out an amazing animator. You could go through someone else's courses, but that doesn't necessarily guarantee that you're going to get income from that work, okay? There are plenty of artists in the business before the internet and during the internet and even maybe beyond the internet who will always be amazing but still struggle financially because it's a different thing. OK, it's a different skill set entirely. So if your college course and if your degree is teaching you that, then it might be worth hanging on to it for a little while. We didn't have that. I didn't have that. I never learned anything like that. All we learned about was the Cahiers du Cinema and why American filmmaking is trivial and European uh, artistic film and the auteur theory and basically how capitalism is bad and all that. That's what my degree taught me. And it was an animation degree. OK, um, no, thank you. OK, but that doesn't necessarily mean your degree is going to teach you that. OK, right. Um, so now let's go on to the next thing that you've said. Um, I want to really get it because I'm becoming passionate about it, about it. And you're saying you want to bathe yourself in it. Now, the, the important thing about that is, is 
you have to be disciplined. One of the things I one of the things I tell people who join the training library and they join the free Facebook global community, I say, look, now you can post for feedback. It doesn't mean it's a good thing. Because if you're trying to, if you're hanging on one exercise and you're not allowing yourself to move on to the next one because you think you don't know and you haven't perfected it, you're actually damaging your progress. You're damaging it because progression, if, for example, if you're trying to do press ups, this is why I, I, I associate my work with the word training rather than teaching because I come from a training background. I used to train martial arts and those kind of things. So if you're working at pull-ups or press-ups or things like that, you, you, you can't concentrate on strict form when you've got no strength to pull yourself over the bar. The first things you're trying to do is develop the strength to pull yourself over the bar. So you're just going to have to do it repeatedly over and over again. That's what training is. You don't have time to philosophize about how well you know the thing or, oh, I don't feel I know it enough and I'm being pushed on to the next one and I don't know. So I'm maybe I agree. OK, maybe this course is not giving you enough time because that certainly I felt like the case with the girl doing the Red Riding Hood thing. OK. Sometimes it is ridiculous. They just want to get through their curriculum. But the balance, the other side is, is it's, sometimes you just don't allow yourself to progress. You don't allow yourself to get far because you're, no, you're too much of a perfectionist. You're too hard on yourself too early on. You don't, you, you, people need to get out of their own way. So that, you know, it's, it's a double-edged sword. You can't just, you can't just say, I want to feel like I know it. We, you know, I, I've always been a control freak all my life, and I'm so thankful I'm over that now. Because when I got over it, I'm able to actually reach more, reach higher than I've ever reached before, get further than I've ever got before, and really start um, accomplishing things in my life because I've let go, basically. Because I've stopped stifling myself by trying to perfect everything uh, and feel like I need to be in the know. There's so much shit out there that I don't know. And there's so much shit that I, I don't know that I don't know. And, you know, it's just best to just be aware of that and say, isn't that wonderful? Let's just keep going and maybe I'll find it along the way. So the thing is, so now you've said, um, so my question, if you don't mind sharing your opinion, because you also have a degree, how was it? How has a degree benefited you or has it given you any advantage if it hadn't? Can then you briefly explain why? Well, that wasn't a brief explanation. <laughs> Thank you, MB. I'm in an anatomy course and I haven't progressed much because I'm being a perfectionist about the exercises. Absolutely. My pleasure. Um, if it had, can, I know in your bio you said you felt it hadn't or it took more time to learn something than me. It will be nice going through your library at my own pace. I think, as I understand it, for feedback and critiques, your students or members would just post on Facebook to get that critique. I think the Facebook loop and accountability is important to training seriously in any field. I don't know how many members you have, but it sounds like from your videos that you try to make sure you go over some of their work. This is one of my concerns with joining, though it's not a major one because your tutorials are pretty thorough. Um, so it's important that I bring that up. OK, it's I'm glad that you mentioned that. You know, my feedback in the global Facebook community, I always say that that is not, you know, that's just something that I've just, I just do. Uh, it's not part of the training library. The, the feedback that I've decided to give to people, I just feel it's just an extra thing out there that allows me to reach more people and allows me to help them answer their questions. But uh, touching back on the previous point that I had, you can sometimes, sometimes that feedback spoils people's progress. We've got somebody, uh, he won't mind me mentioning his name. We've got somebody uh, caught in that group called Dwayne Stafford Gale, who's, who joined the library and he's been posting and he's been looking for feedback and he gets feedback from anyone and everything. And, and you know, and then he changes it. And then it's the same with a couple of other people. They get feedback, doesn't matter who it's from. And what feedback, looking for feedback is, is insecurity. OK, what what it is, is my real animator training system. Um, it's proven 
it works. It gets results. Just go to the global Facebook community and see the results happening. You've just seen me give a job to one of my reanimated training library me uh, members who just cleaned up, cleaned up one of my scenes of rough animation. And you've just seen how hard it is to do that through the, through the documenting of that. And you've just seen what a stellar job he did. And you could just, you know, even, you know, even my biggest hater will have trouble saying that it doesn't work. Just go there and see that it works. So the thing is, what the what the what the insecure insecurity is, is is that you 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 kind of it's not that you don't have you don't believe in yourself, but you're also because you've been let down through the others other learning systems throughout your life, that you somehow subconsciously don't trust in the training system that you're learning through. My real animated training system works the best when you don't you know when you have minimal feedback and you just go through it there's a girl on here called angela martinez okay um uh she's in that group she goes by the name of life fantasy she's been through every training library exercise without any feedback and the progress and the quality is just stunning so stunning in fact that I'm, I'm, I'm she's going to be one of the next people that i give a commission to i'm so impressed by her work my training is on video and my training i can't speak about other people's trainings but those of you that have seen my training and this is why it's such a niche thing and i'm not a big youtuber because because i basically tell you everything and everything that i'm drawing in a training course, not the free stuff you're seeing on the Red Riding Hood or whatever. In a training course, I'm basically doing the whole exercise in front of you, real time, step by step, and telling you the what, the when, the why, and everything as I'm making those marks. Not hiding anything. I'm basically giving, it's like you're standing over my shoulder with me and watching me do it. And knowing what's going on through my brain. That's the real animator training experience when I'm giving that to you in those videos. And the plus side of that is, is you are supposed to follow along with the video. That's why you're doing a bouncing ball or a stick man or a flower sack. It's something that you can draw. It's not one of my characters. That's in the later archives, the advanced archives, the thing where you can improvise and deviate, but you shouldn't deviate. You follow along pause the video, rewind if you don't get it, and just do it. And you keep going through. How do you keep a character consistent in your animation? Can you keep a bouncing ball consistent? Can you keep two bouncing ball consistent? One, one bouncing ball attached to another, a square. If you can't, then forget the character. That's the short answer. Uh, thanks for the question. I'm just being brief because I'm answering a, a letter. So the thing is, that answer that I've just given you, that answer that I've just given you basically is why we, we do training library. You follow along. You follow along and you do not deviate. And you get the results. And you don't really need the feedback because you watch yourself. That's what I'm saying. The perfectionist mentality has to go. And you just say, okay, well, I'll do these exercises. So when you have the pendulum, you have the pendulum swinging. Then you have the pendulum settling to a stop. Then you have the pendulum dropping and dangling and settling to the stop. Then you have the pendulum spinning around, spinning really fast and settling to a stop. How many did it settling? Preliminarily, you're doing the same thing over and over again, like a pull-up or a press-up, and you're getting stronger and stronger and stronger and stronger and stronger until you get it. And then you start seeing the results in your own thing. The inner security develops as if I know this, I can do this. That's what's the magic. That's why what I'm particularly proud of about my training system. So yes, you, you're more than welcome. I've put that group there because I think it's great that training libraries can interact, members can interact with other training library members, watch each other's progress, get inspired by them and talk to each other. So yeah, you're right. Feedback is a good thing, but it is secondary. It is secondary. You've got to get through the actual exercise and just get comfortable with the fact that you are unable at the moment and incapable. If you're comfortable with the fact that you're unable and incapable, then you're going to be looking forward that you're going to be able and capable as time passes. 
if you're following a structured system. So when it comes to the feedback, I actually choose who I'm going to give feedback to. If somebody looks like they're, they're really working hard on that exercise and they've really listened, then I'll say, okay, I'm going to give this person some extra, some feedback. Um, if the other person, if, if, if another person has posted the exercise and changed it and tried to do something of their own, I will tell them once. If you stray from the path, you're going to wander away from, look, the goal is success. You're going in the direction of success. If you turn your eyes and walk to where your eyes are going, then that's, your, that's on you. But if they keep doing it, then I'll just, I won't give the feedback because I'll say, okay, you know what? They've, it's, they have, they have bought my product. I've told them how to use it. They don't want to, that's, it's on them. I can't, you know, whatever. I can't change the way it works for, because for their enjoyment. So the thing is, it's important that you understand that feedback is, is, is good, but I think you shouldn't place too much emphasis on it, especially when you're beginning, you're, you're, you're beginning to learn foundational basic skills. Foundation basic skills are things that you need ingrained into your subconscious. They'll take you about a year to learn well. And once you've got those foundational skills, then you start producing your own work. And when you get feedback, you'll get feedback from people who have foundation, foundational knowledge and you will understand how to do, how to improve your work. If you go and get feedback from somebody who has no foundational knowledge and just tells you their opinion and you don't know, have any foundational knowledge, the feedback is just a load of shit. They, can't, they don't know what they're talking about. You are in, you're not able to do, address what they're talking about because you don't understand it. And that's why I, I think feedback, uh, feedback is overrated for people who are too early on. You got to build your foundation first. Okay. And then once you got your foundation first, you kind of have the communication skills to be able to actually understand what it is you're doing wrong. If, you, if you're trying to do a, a pendulum swing and they're telling you pendulums don't move like that, the physics is wrong, this is that, that's that. No. How about somebody tells you, well, if you've, you've, you're arcing, your arc is wrong, okay? Your arc is not really going in a smooth figure of eight and you're not slowing in at the peak of the figure of eight and your slow out is missing maybe about three frames, okay? How many seconds is it? Oh, it's about 12 seconds. Okay, well, what's a quarter of a second? A quarter of a second is about six frames. Okay, so why don't you slow out for six frames? Now, that's good feedback to a beginner. That's beginner feedback. But we're talking law. We're talking animation law. Okay, that's what we're talking. That kind of feedback, if you understand it, will really work. If I say, okay, now that works on halves. Why not try it on thirds? You get a bit of a pop out of it. I'm not talking complex stuff. I'm talking complex stuff to the people who spent years looking on animation forums talking about why they why they why anime is better than Disney and and all this and that. But they don't know. They're not going to give you good feedback. Just plain and simple. You need feedback. F for fundamentals, F for feedback. So there's no point in getting feedback too early on when you don't know the fundamentals. So it's extremely important that you just do the work, just get through the work and make sure that those fundamentals are ingrained in you. So it's important that I've said that. So you've kind of got that vibe anyway. You've said to me, I think the feedback loop and accountability is important to training seriously in any field. Yes, but depending at what stage you are, okay, in any field, uh, I don't know how many members you have, but it sounds like from your videos that you try to make sure you go over some of their work. This is a, one of my concerns with joining, though it's not a major one because your tutorials are pretty thorough. So, yeah, you get the vibe. You, you know, you just do it. You go through it. Not just your training, but even others like Aaron Blaze and Proko. I don't know that I fully understand how you guys could possibly cover member submissions or how 
you critique your member submissions. Maybe I'm imagining you guys are getting hundreds of submissions a week or something like that. And that's not the case. Any insight would be helpful. Again, really enjoy your videos. Thank you for taking the time to make them. That in itself is a labor of love. I've learned quite a bit from what little I have seen. Look forward to your reply, Sylvia. Oops. Uh, oh, well, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure she won't be too angry with me for, for, for saying her name. Uh, it's a lovely name. But the thing is, um, I can't speak for the other guys. Um, I can't speak for the other people. But you've just heard how I give my feedback. I'm selective on my feedback. And the beauty of the training library is that so many other training library members are going through those exercises and going through those archives that we're creating a, a global community and peer group of real animator training people who have been there and done that. And they're stepping in. They're stepping in and they're saying when, you know, people are just generally helpful all around. If, so we've got people, you know, even I mentioned Life Fantasy, who's extremely talented. She's gone and commented on many of the library members posts and said, I feel you're missing this and you're missing that. And they've been through the exercise. Aaron AOX, he's been through the exercise. He goes and he comments a little bit. We've got Akau, who's uh, still muscling through the basics himself, but uh, he's he's a good guy and um, he's, he's, he's got a good understanding of the foundations. So he's, um, he's going and he's commenting in there as well. And of course, I come and I review the wall and I, anything that stands out or anybody who I think needs particular help, I will, uh, I'll go in there and, and throw in some, uh, some feedback. So that, that's how the whole uh, global Facebook community thing works. Now, the other thing I'll mention to you, since you're considering joining Real Animator Training, is you've only been watching AMB videos for two weeks. Um, I try to be as real as I can on the streams and in person. Um, this is me when I'm fairly calm. <laughs> so I don't know if you've heard me passionately sort of talk about animation training and sometimes uh, a li perhaps I do it less so now as I'm maturing as, a, as an animation instructor. Um, sometimes I might be a little bit dismissive or a little bit brash in my in my language. It comes from my martial arts training background uh, where I used to just talk like basically like this is how it's done. You got to do it this way. It's something that resonates with a lot of people I found, but it, but, but it's also something that might not necessarily um, resonate well with others. So you, it's it's about frequency. So if you I'm glad that you you're feeling like that you uh, you're getting a lot from my videos, but um, perhaps join go to Facebook and join the free Real Animator Training Growth Development and Progress Group. You'll have nine free videos to try out there from the training library. I highly recommend before you, um, before you make any decision about your university or about what to do with real animated training, go and have a go at some of those exercises in those videos. And if you feel that it's something that you can really benefit from and grow from, then yeah, by all means, it'll be my absolute pleasure to, to welcome you on board and, 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 uh, watch you accelerate your ability. That's basically what it's all about. What do you think about James Baxter? I don't think anything about James Baxter. I know that James Baxter is one of the greatest living animators in this world. So, so hopefully that answers your question. Okay, so that is the um, uh, my response to the letter that I received uh, earlier today, actually. I received it, I woke up this morning and, and I saw that letter. And I was sitting down to type it and I said, you know what, I hate typing. And I'm, I've am i already typed about four letter responses to the similar kind of thing. Why don't I just go online, make a live stream, make a response to this question. And then any other question I get that's uh, remotely similar, I can just point to it and whatever. Okay, so um, we've been going on for an hour almost now. So I'm, as I've been answering this question, I've been seeing the chat buzzing away. I've been talking about all this copper business and worrying about YouTube. Um, obviously, some of you are more uh, concerned about that. So, but whatever, if you, if any of you uh, people who are watching, I'm so grateful. Thank you for watching. Have anything you'd like to ask me that, I mean, obviously,
Luckily, I've got no pencil and uh, Wacom in my hand, so I'm not going to be able to draw. What have I got? I've got something here. I've got my old horse anatomy sketchbook here. Some of you have seen this. So what have we got here? Some of you have seen this. This is a blast from the past, but like, there you go. So while you're asking your questions, I'll just, I'll just, I'll just turn this and, and make it a little bit relevant. So here's some anatomy. <laughs> here's some <laughs> classic anatomy study. There we go. Yeah. Um, I'm filling uh, one on humans, but this, this is just close at hand where I'm... Hey, I've worked through the corrections on the Cleanup Commission. I'll post those up and send you the... Awesome. Awesome. Uh, looking forward to that. Um, we maybe get that colored by the end of the year, Harry. So there we go. Let's see. Any more questions while I'm just flipping through this? Um, okay. Well... Hopefully, anyway, I'm, I like to flip through this uh, sketch pad because it, it, uh, this is a bit off topic, but how can you make good, good connections as an animator? Okay, right, we got a good question. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Bye-bye, horse anatomy sketchbook. Um, I wish I'd find some dog anatomy, specifically the occipital bones with names. Uh, go on YouTube. I've, I've seen loads of it on, on YouTube. Uh, 3D, you've got to look at um, 3D models. Of uh, I, I you know I love looking at three D CG models of anatomy and bones. I mean, the you get a perfect turnaround. Yeah, the model might not be a hundred percent accurate, but come on. I mean, even Leonardo da Vinci or Michelangelo, you think their drawings are one hundred percent accurate? I don't care what master it is. It's just it's just personal preference, personal taste. The information is there. That's what a scapula looks like, and the three D model is awesome i love it i can use it and i'll study it and it's giving me the information i need some kind people in the chat already gave me their take but i like to hear okay how to make connections okay now we're getting questions i want to be 2d animator do you think i should focus on <laughs> okay too many questions <laughs> i can't read them all okay well let me just focus on the connections one okay maybe the other person could type it when i'm when, when i kind of like hint Okay, because that sounded like a good question too. What will you do when you finish being a storyboard animation director? I'm I'm not a storyboard animation director. I, I you know I'm I'm the head of AMB Animation. Um, AMB Animation, uh, you know, is is my priority. That 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 was just an extra bit of income. And quite frankly, you know, I believe a lot in vibes in the universe. I'm going to come to that question. Don't worry, the person who asked it about the connections. I believe a lot in vibes in the universe. And I didn't really want to take that job because I was quite comfortable doing AMB animation. Now I took that job and uh, I thought, well, you know what? I can promote AMB while doing that job. I'll say, look, I've walked into an industry job. I'm an animation director. I'm the head of story on a, on a multi-million dollar uh, feature film funded by major streaming media. Uh, cinemas in America have already con contributed to the funding. It's, you know, it's a guaranteed international release, blah, blah, blah. So I was all using that to, as a, all as a p promotional material for real. Uh, but then, you know, something halted the production. And, it, and you know, as the production was being halted, I was privately wanting to go back to real animated training anyway, because I'm done with that. It's, it's every bit of my time. OK, you guys looking from the out in all wanting to be industry. I don't I don't blame you. I get it. We all need to be there at, at some time, you know, but I've done that for 20 odd years. OK, and it's time for me to shine properly. OK, and that's not through being anybody's bloody lackey, not being a human pencil for some major multimillion dollar. That's putting AMB out there. AMB is changing lives. AMB is, you know, AMB is legit for real making difference in in the hand-drawn uh independent hand-drawn animation community that to me is like that is what i'm doing you know i'm no longer being a little man you know uh, a, a a a lap dog for the industry no and and you know and the the the, the more and more lives i change the more and more uh noise i make and the, you know this is a great time so that's what i'm doing <laughs> you know, I'm not, you know, I'm an animation director and story artist for the industry on the side when I feel like it. Let's just put it that way. 
when I feel <laughs> when I, when I feel like it. I just got an email from that guy today. Apparently they're going to be starting up, but I'm not going to go back to that. I'm just having too much fun doing. I've got no need to go back to that. You see how amazing life is when you take your art, your art by the horns and you put it out there and you have full faith and belief in your ability and what you can accomplish with it. You know, this is where AMB is going next. Once we've, once we've changed the life of a certain amount of animators and we're going into a certain phase, I'm going to unrelease, uh, uh, unreveal the secrets to the people that I've learned because they're secrets still to me at the moment. That I'm getting more and more. I'm discovering more and more of them now. But I'm going to reveal the secrets to all artists, illustrators, musicians, or anybody calling themselves an artist, how you can thrive and succeed financially as well through your own stuff, rather than being some little lapdog out there trying to get in the industry. Please give me a job. Please, can I draw for your shitty little film? No, no, thank you. I'm kind of done with that. You know, I'm so thankful I'm over that. And I believe in myself rather than believing in some, uh, hoping some other person will like my drawings. Fuck off. No, 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 no. I'm kind of secure in myself now. And, um, it, uh, you know, and that's, that, that's, that's one of the first uh, secrets, if you want to call it, um, that, that needs to be learned is to have full faith and security in yourself and your ability to accomplish what you can. And that's got nothing to do with how good other people are and how good you are in, in comparison to other people. It's, you know, many people confuse this and I did for many years. I did for many years, but no, no more. Right, so on to the um, one about animation connections. I've said this so many times, okay? Animation connections, okay? Now, I'm going to use the analogy because I've heard it many times, but I'm not an expert because I used to be afraid of women like you wouldn't believe. Always had my head down, always insecure. Oh, God, there's a girl. No, no, you know. But I'm going to use this analogy because it works and most of you understand it. Maybe guys. So sorry, girls, I'm a guy, so I, can, I think this analogy works. They say that if you're afraid of girls, okay, you just keep asking girls out and get rejected a hundred times and then you won't be afraid. It's not about actually finding uh, the right girl. It's about getting over yourself over, you know, just get used to the rejection. Just get used to the rejection. Now, that wasn't me, okay? That wasn't me. I never asked anyone out. My wife asked me out. <laughs> okay? But I'm using the analogy because I can see it and it works. I've heard it. This is something salespeople, okay? I've had sales training. I've had sales training. Okay, mute Mary. Yes, I was mute Mary Hernandez. I was nervous around girls until my mid 30s. Even if a girl would come and embrace me like that, I'd be like this. And I was a big, hard ass martial arts instructor, but it would be like this whenever there'd be a girl. Because I never had, you know, I was just a completely. Uh, I'm, I'm kind of like a private guy. I just keep to myself that's why i talk so much because i've got cabin fever you know i'm kind of like you know it's just like I, I just keep to myself and do my work but since meeting my wife i've become a lot more um i've got a lot more confidence in that area and around females or whatever but anyway i digress you know the thing is having a stepdaughter helps as well uh the thing is um <laughs> these comments the thing is i'm using this analogy because when i started up amb animation we had to learn about the mile the, the <laughs> these comments are just distracting me now we had to learn about the um god you guys we had to learn about the how to sell okay now me being me you know I sell in my own way. So you all see, 
uh, I just think, you know, I can't help but go back to Bruce Lee and say, honestly expressing yourself. But there is a good side to that training. There is a good side to that training. The side of that training teaches, teaches you stuff about, you know, overcoming fears. And people don't like being rejected. People don't like being told no. And we all have one thing that we don't like being told no about. Now, maybe my subconscious was is I wanted animation so bad that I didn't care about that, you know. I, 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 maybe I wanted a girlfriend as well, but I, because you, you're nervous because you care too much. But maybe something in me just said, just go for it with the animation. So I wasn't afraid about anything when it was down to animation. I would be like, like I'm gonna, I'll, I'll go for a job when I'm 16. I'm gonna go to this studio. I'm gonna go and apply to Uli Meyer Animation. He's the guy who did Space Jam. I'm gonna go and apply to him, him when I'm 17, 18 years old and I've just started university. If I do that, then I can leave university and work for Uli. So I, I had no fear of rejection for that. And I really cared about that. But sometimes when you really care about something, you do have a fear of rejection. So where am I going with this? What has this got to do with how to make animation connections? Well, go on to LinkedIn, find as many animators as you can, in your area preferably where you can meet them up, okay? And the ones that you really look up to, find them as well, even if they're not in your area, because then this goes on you, okay? Find as many as you can, write as many letters as you can, Try and meet as many as you can and talk to them and befriend them. That's all there is to it. If you have to send a hundred letters and get a hundred no's, send a hundred letters and get a hundred no's. You're developing a new skill as well. It's called thick skin. I can come on the stream and talk like this because I've got thick skin now. So the thing is, once you do that, you then maybe meet somebody I'm laughing at the thought that AMB had its prince. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Yeah, I can show you the world. Bullshit, I didn't. You asked me and I just was a coward in disguise. <laughs> there you go. Anyway, but the thing is, um, you ask, you basically, the ones that you really want to meet, you might have to get on a plane and fly to where they are. But how bad do you want it? So let's let's use a let's use a really inspiring person for example. Um, uh, let's say that Glenn Keane was was signing books or doing something, and he was doing it in another city. Go there, and think, visualize yourself. What am I going to do? To, what am I going to say to him? Oh, but if you go there and say, I'm like a, just another guy, he's just going to sign my book and that'll be the end of it. Oh, well, then you've already created your little scenario of what's going to happen. And that's probably what's going to happen. But then think, sit down, OK, and then maybe it might be different. You know, the world's a funny place. So I love that movie in The Last Samurai and every time I see it, I cry. And this is another thing that my princess wife keeps looking at me going, why are you crying? It's a guy getting hit with a sword. What are you crying about? I'm crying because when I see that, I see me. Every time I see that scene where he's got that sword and he's been nursed back to health and he's got this wooden sword and this little boy is hitting the sword and then, then the man comes and tells him, Katana Urese, put the sword down. And he basically says, he doesn't put it down. And then the man knocks him down and he picks, picks and he picks the sword up. Then the man knocks him down again and he picks the sword and he knocks him down. He keeps knocking him down until he has to just take the sword away from him and throw it to the kid. Because otherwise he's just going to kill him. But the man will just not stop. And that's what you got to be. You got to be persistent. So... I can give you a formula on how to meet people. It's not hard, whether they're animators, whether they're girls, whether they're Red Fox, it's crying. You know, I, I don't go, you know, all of this, what it takes to be a man. I don't need anybody, any society to tell me whether I'm a man or not. Fuck off. I've got my own idea of what a man is and that's what I am. <laughs> you know, so there you go. I am what I am. <laughs> but anyway, um, so the thing is, Basically, persistence. 
it's not difficult. Whether it's a girl, whether it's an animation connection, whether it's anything, whether it's connections in the business world or connections in something, it's something that you need if you really, really need it and you feel you need it, then you've got to be persistent, you know. So hopefully that answers your question. Hopefully that gives you some insight. I've tried to tell it to you in a very, uh, in, in a relatable way where you can kind of sort of laugh a little bit and understand that actually, yeah, well, you know, that makes sense. Um, it makes sense. There's, there's, there's. It's pretty obvious, really. I mean, everybody can state the obvious, but perhaps if you hear it like that, it'll it'll resonate with you a little bit. You'll maybe think, oh, okay, well, I, I, that's how I make connections. I mean, if you sit there, all the, you might have ever heard of that thing, upping your peer, peer group. It's not about the tool. Do you think I should invest in a Cintiq? I'm working on an Intuos now, not bad at all. Aurens, if you're doing that kind of stuff with a, with a, Cinti, with a Intuos, incredible. Let me tell you about Intuos and me. I worked as a professional animator and storyboard artist with an Intuos just fine. And I, when I was stubborn and foolish, I would say, I'm not touching a Cintiq. If I'm going to draw, it will be on my drawing board. <sighs> but this is this foolishness, you know, just foolishness. But the thing is, is I did fine on the Cintiq, on the, on the Intuos. But when I switched to Cintiq, I can't go back. I can't go back. It's just too natural for me to draw like that. Maybe... Um, Alrens, basically, I think, what I think, okay, is I work on it, it's six years old and it still works great. Life fantasy, I still love my 12WX. Alrens, here's what it is, you know? People say that it takes a lot of time to do something. It doesn't take a lot of time to do something. When you do something, it's done like that. It literally is done like that. If I'm going to say something to somebody, we were talking about asking girls out. If you ask a girl out, it's done the minute you open your mouth. Okay. But the thing that takes the time is the thinking about it, the thinking about it, the thinking about it. Here's the best way to save time. Okay. Because thinking and anxiety about something that is you know, you're wasting a lot of time sometimes, and that's not accomplishing anything. So the inevitable outcome, this is just my, this is just my, um, Mute Midori's going by, Mute Midori, thanks for making me laugh. <laughs> the inevitable thing about um, you, from my perspective, is, is you are going to end up on a Cintiq anyway. Any serious professional in the business is going to have some kind of drawing tablet like that. Thank you, Gregor. Thank you. Appreciate that. Any serious artist is going to end up drawing on a screen. I don't care about the model, okay? You're going to have people in the chat that are so caught up, like Sega, Nintendo, PlayStation, blah, blah, I'll use this one. I don't care. Here today, gone tomorrow. Fuck off. I'm not cared about whether you're a Wacom or a Cintiq or a, or a whatever the other company is, Huon or whatever. Whoever makes the good one and the, that works for you, fantastic, right? Let's, get to, let's keep to the point, okay? The point is, any serious artist, anybody who's, a, using a good, who's a good at their uh, trade uh, wants, wants to have the, the best tools, okay? So... My suggestion is, is you're going to end up getting it anyway. So if you can get it sooner, just get it sooner. And then you don't quit time wasting thought, wasting energy. Energy is coming to and through you all the time. Don't waste that time thinking about stuff that's going to inevitably happen anyway. Okay. This is what, it's, what this whole copper YouTube thing is. Whatever's going to happen, it's going to happen. And you're going to have to toe the line whether you, whether you want to or whether you don't. So stop wasting time and just cross that bridge when you come to it. Focus on the stuff that makes that makes it happen. 
Somebody just said a true artist can make great artists with whatever. Yes, that's true. But, you know, you a true artist defining by whose personal standards and preferences. You know, at the end of the day, it's about efficiency. It's about efficiency. I talk down software all the time. Anybody who knows me knows that. Anybody who knows me knows that I say it's not about the software of things. But what I am is, is I'm not a liar. Okay? I'm not a liar and I don't like to mislead anyone. And what I'm saying here is, is it's damn efficient if you've got, uh, if you're using the better technology, you don't have to scan your drawings, you don't have to waste time. Because the most valuable commodity on this earth is time. And if we've got a way that we can directly draw into the machine, color into the machine, and have all these things in front of us where we don't waste time having to imp bring them in in another way because we want to be a true artist. You know, you know, if you're happy being a true artist doing that, great. I'd rather save my time and be a false artist because, I, you know, because, because I've got too much that I want to accomplish and achieve. And it goes, it's just faster to do it that way. So... For example, the, the whole training library wouldn't exist if I didn't have a Cintiq and I didn't have software and a screen capture to capture that and share all that knowledge with you. I got a new iPad with Apple Pencil so much better. Uh, I missed a question. That's the problem with this uh, thing. It just flashes. From your experience, what drawing skills are the most helpful to animations aside from actually animating? Would it be perspective, understanding anatomy, something? <sighs> The thing is, is like all of these things like anatomy, when it comes to drawing, drawing is a craft just like animation, okay? So when it comes to anatomy and perspective and all these things, anatomy, you can't just say anatomy, perspective. Anatomy is a fundamental, just like the 12 laws of animation, okay? Just like squash and stretch, just like timing, just like uh, follow through and overlap, just like uh, primary, secondary, just like arcing. It's a fundamental. So we can't say either or. Perspective is a fundamental. Now, when we talk perspective, are we talking, do you know how to do technical architecture 3.4 point? No, because that's varying. I'm talking about basic fundamentals of horizon line, depth, you know, negative space, an understanding of spatial awareness. As long as you've got that fundamental down, a little bit of knowledge about two, three point, whatever. But, you know, it's a fundamental you know, if you want to go down the route of being a being a perspective drawer, then you there's more to it than just that. So you've got to go down and study that technical drawing, you know. So, and it's the same with anatomy. Now, I know human anatomy extremely well, extremely well. I don't really know. I, I studied the horse anatomy, okay. Uh, that's one quadruped, but I don't know the names of the dog bones and the dog muscles or a cat bones and cat muscles. I'm not an anatomy specialist. I'm not like a 100% anatomy specialist, but I have a fundamental grounding. And as long as you have a fundamental grounding in the basics of drawing, which is, which is line and shape, okay? Line and shape. Those are the two fundamental things. Line, shape, tone, okay? And then if you want to talk about subject matter, okay, these apply, line, shape, and tone, apply to your subject matter because when it comes to your subject matter, if it's anatomy or, or still life, you're still using line, shape, and tone. Okay, then you need to understand negative space, okay, which is part of shape because you have the shape of the silhouette of what you're doing and then the negative space. But then that brings in all these other things like depth, perception and perspective. So you see where all of this is going. So my thing is, is focus on something like anatomy, master the bones of the human body. Develop your drawing through mastering the bones. That's why I have the anatomy archive in the library. I think you're a full-time member, Lily Chan. So that's why, that's what I call my drawing archive. You master the bones of the human body. And by mastering those bones, by working macro, you learn shape. 
you learn shape and line. Then working micro, you use hand-eye coordination and develop your ability to copy and shade and get all the pretty stuff in there. But basically, it's the shape and the line that you're learning. Because when we then animate, we think about silhouette and we think because these, these characters are moving at 1 24th or 1 12th of a second. Okay, and our eye is going to pick up the big basic main shapes, the science of shape simplification, which is a real animator training term. So your drawing as an animator would be preferably to be focusing on line and shape, but it's how good your understanding of your subject matter through your study of line and shape is going to enable you to transition that into the animation to a level that you become good. Um, hopefully that gives you a, an, an artist, um, an, uh, not an artist, uh, uh, hopefully that gives you a, a good response, something that you can think about. But um, again, the, the important thing to do when you're doing drawing or animation, either one, is just to sit back, and this is the hard part, sit back and let it happen okay because what happens is is you're you're starting something but then you're you see you've got a conscious mind and a subconscious mind your subconscious mind has been set a task okay i'm going to draw a picture so you're starting something but then your conscious mind starts looking around and it starts looking at other people and other people's abilities and other people's skills and then it starts telling your subconscious that you are not good enough or you're inadequate or you somehow can't really do it right or you're you know are you're doing it wrong maybe you should do what that so the minute the subconscious your subconscious is such a amazing part it keeps your heart beating it keeps you uh, keeps you alive it makes you you know we program it it's our thing that makes us do what we need to do and most a lot of people are not aware to the, of that and what happens is is your conscious mind is constantly looking at all these i want i want i want i wish i wish i wish i hope i hope and you're not letting the thing do the job that it's been set that's what it is so basically just get out of your own way allow the time it's like a kid who's planted a tomato plant and he just comes back 15 minutes later and and digs it up because he's looking for the roots to have come and shot through the ground give it a chance give it a chance you know that's that's what i that's basically to learn to let go that's one of the hardest things uh, that, that most people, I feel, most people struggle with. I like it, but I'm not, not an expert in that stuff. Uh, it's not the software, it's cheap. Okay, right, well, there we go. So I'm thinking that's about it. I mean, is anybody, is there any other question there? I mean, um, AMB, thank you very much. That was very insightful. My pleasure. That basically, Lily Chan, yeah, that's, that's kind of like... Uh, one of the things that I said I was going to follow you up on um, on some uh, in an email. I appreciate that you take time to do these Q&A sessions. You really care, and it's damn hard to find these days. Getting back to the library after some time. Thanks for the great info. My tips on balancing work with a relationship. Insightful. Okay. Right. Thank you, Michael. Thank you. I appreciate that. So tips on balancing... Uh, work with the relationship okay well this comes this is going to be two answers because it, you've just reminded me of a question that i received in my on my uh community youtube community thing work-life balance work-life balance i don't believe exists um i don't believe that you if you're looking for a work-life balance my this is my view okay my view i'm wrong if you disagree, I'm wrong, okay? And you're right, but this is my view. Um, there should be no work-life balance because if you think about it, you, you've just immediately told yourself that you're not really passionate about what you do. When you come to real animator training, when you come to AMB streams or AMB material, you have to understand animation is my fucking life. 
Animation is my world. Animation is my everything. Take the animation out of me. I have no life. What balance? Animation brings me balance. Drawing brings me balance. Take it out of me. I have no life. Okay? The more important question, which I think you don't realize what you're asking me, is, is people have been conditioned through society to think that life is going and living their life is hanging out with their mates or going for a piss up in the town or watching the game. And then you've got to go and do your job, your obligatory job to pay the tax man. That's what people are calling work. It's not work to me, it's an obligatory job. You've all seen what I've done to my obligatory job. I lead by example. I left, it. I left the industry, I'm doing AMB animation. That's my work. I'm working at making people better animators. I'm working at making AMB the standard, for the, 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 the standard symbol of uh, the person, the, the, yeah, the standard symbol that made hand-drawn animation special again. That's what I'm working on. That's my life. So I don't need to balance it. I don't need any balance in that. That's what I want to do. That's the way it is. If, if I have an obligatory job, okay, then you have to think about this, okay? If you've got an obligatory job where you're not, you don't want to do it. Say you work in a, in a in a McDonald's or I don't know, a shoe shop or something and you don't want to do it. It's just your way of paying the tax man or something like that. The work-life balance should be like your mind should be on your life. If your life is animation, then while you're doing that, it's just leave it to your subconscious and then plan what you're going to do when you have some spare time, uh, how to stop doing that and how to start living. OK, it's not about work life balance. Life is just life. How are you going to live it to the fullest? That's the question you should be asking yourself. How can I live my life to the fullest? OK, you never have to balance things when you're when when there are things that you really want. OK. You see, sometimes I'm online more often than not, uh, more often than other times. You know why? Because other times I'm deciding that, you know what? I want to spend this time just with my wife, with my family. I'm going to go and stay a couple of months in, in New Zealand. Then I'm coming back here because my parents live here. And I come back and I keep an eye on them because it's in my heart. I don't like them to be alone. Yeah, I want that. I want that. So I'm able to make my life work for me. There's nothing in there that I really don't want. And the things that are in there that I really don't want, the obligatory things that I really don't want, I don't even think about. I just leave that to my subconscious because my subconscious, just like it keeps my heart be beating and my you know, brain waves working and my, you know, and not, tells me to brush my teeth in the morning and to shower after my workout and all those things. You don't think, you just do. So at the end of the day, when it comes to paying the tax man or going to the bank or dealing with something because it's some shit that I, I don't really want to do, I just don't think about it. I just say, well, I'll sort it. That has to be done. It'll be done waste your time and your energy on on that so hopefully that'll also come through to the other question how do you balance a relationship okay well i like to call jobs jobs and work work i work i work on my body i work out i work on my animation i'm working on my animation i work on my health i i i, I watch what i eat i work on my relationship, I make sure my wife and my daughter and my parents feel special, feel unique, feel that they're loved, feel that they're the only per people on this world that matter. That's what I do because that's work to me. It's not something, work is not a bad word to me. Work is, work is a mandatory thing to give me enrichment. A job 
is something that I don't care for. So hopefully that that helps you kind of understand my perspective on this. It's like, how do you balance? I don't need to balance my relationship with my work because my relationship is my work, if you understand. Everything that I care about is my work. You don't just say, I have a relationship now. No, it's something that you need to work at. It's something that you constantly need to work at. It's ever evolving. It's a person like you. It's a personality. It's ever evolving. You need to work on it constantly. And I'm doing this with all my YouTube people as well. I'm doing it with my real animator training people as well. If I just sat back there and said, well, the real animator training library is uh, climbing up, making a lot of money now. Uh, AMB is on the rise. Let's just keep on doing. But I didn't really care about the people in it. Then that's a very foolish thing to do, isn't it? Because it's, it's, it's turning it into a job. It's turning it into something that I don't care about. I care about these people in here should be actually coming up and showing their skills and feeding off each other and building. And I should be, I should be interacting with them a little bit more. So I've started doing some of these streams and all those kind of things. It's work to me and it's not, it's not a job. It's something that I want to do. It's something that enriches me, you know? So whether it's a relationship with you guys or a relationship with, my wife, it's something, it's not something that I feel I have to balance. You know, it's something that, that, that I want to do. You know, so I, I used to all the time think about this word balance. Hey, hello, Maharashi Gautam. I used to all the time hear this word balance and think because of my martial arts background, that somehow balance. Yeah, ta -ta, bring balance to life, Daniel son. And I used to all the time nod my head to it as if I was part of that. But in a way, I don't really believe that anymore. I don't believe that all about bring balance to everything. Every, you need to be balanced. You need to be. No, you know, you, you basically everything has a birth, life and death cycle. And if you're fired up and you're in the moment and you're engaged in that, are you in earnest? Only engage. Uh, what is it again? Are you in earnest? Uh, only engage. Boldness has power, magic and genius in it. Only engage and the mind grows heated. Begin and the work shall be completed. That's what it's all about. When you, we, we have moments of inspiration. And when you have those moments of inspiration, you should go all out in that moment of inspiration and throw your everything in it. Forget the balance. Just go all out in it. And then the time will come when that, that will slowly die down and you'll be inspired into something else. Go all out into that too. Okay? But if it's something that really matters, it's not, you're not going to be somebody who's constantly changing because the person who's constantly changing is a person who doesn't really want it, anything. They just live for external gratification. Um, and you wouldn't be on an animation channel watching this going on for 98 minutes and putting up with it if you were that kind of person. So hopefully that brings some uh, something to the table. Um, I appreciate the perspective on this. My pleasure. Okay, 98 minutes. Um, shall we call it a day or has anybody else? Is, is, are we all tired of listening to AMB rant away? Um, I feel I could easily use uh, my VA benefits for life, money, I love art more. There you go. I guess whatever you, whatever is your passion, you should channel towards it. So, yeah. So are we going to uh, call this a day? I'll tell you what. I'll hang around. just for, I'll just wait maybe a minute or so. If there's no other question, then I'll be gone. There we go. Uh, it's been a pretty good stream. I've had a lot of fun answering the question and sharing some of the stuff uh, that I've had to have. Life, my pleasure, Life Eternal Studios. And I haven't been in front of the camera for a, for a while, um, uh, partly because when I'm not around my wife, I'm going to be very honest, 
If you're passionate about something, you should never, yeah. When I'm not around my wife, I'm quite lazy when it comes to taking care of my uh, appearance. Like I just let my beard grow everywhere and I just draw, draw, draw and all that. And then I think, shall I do a stream? Oh, I'm looking too disheveled and messy and and you know <laughs> so, so the, I, I i couldn't take it anymore i think the other day I, I i got rid of my beard uh my uh unkempt beard and i said ah oh, now's the perfect opportunity to do an amv q a there you go so hey i left it a bit long have you ever animated painting i don't quite get that question no i don't really understand it i ever animated painting um no i mean painting is painting and animation is animation <laughs> i'm enjoying this stream immensely my pleasure charlene uh, and the good thing about the global facebook community is as i've really got to know some of the members in there like charlene um this has been a great stream thanks the oh loving vincent oh i see that's just uh that was rotoscope they just uh i think they mean painting with a brush i'm good at this stream okay yeah every frame of that movie was a painting yes but it wasn't animated they didn't really animate it uh color painting like that yeah, yeah so um i don't really uh, amb i'm really struggling with drawing expressions gorov sooth i remember the name gorov sooth you're struggling with drawing expressions because, okay, somebody got really upset at me for saying it like this, but how else can I say it? Look, this this is going to hurt depending on the ego, okay? That, there's, I don't think there's anything wrong with saying that. The reason you're struggling and you don't like struggling is because you're not good enough yet. And the reason you're not good enough yet is, is you're not being patient with trying to get good and learning the right things. If I told you orbicularis oculi, orbicularis oris, zygomatic major, zygomatic minor, frontalis, nasalis, levator depressor, buccinator, would you know what I was talking about? And then you're struggling with expressions. Okay? I'm keeping still. I'm, I'm, I want that to sink in, okay? You see, those are the major facial muscles of the face. How do we make expressions? Do we look at anime? Do we look at an anime drawing and copy it? Because in my opinion, sorry, those guys struggle with expressions too. I'm sorry. I'm not impressed with those expressions. So it depends what kind of expressions you're trying to make with your animation. Okay, it depends what kind of expressions you're trying to make. If you're trying to make a, an anime expression, well, you're asking the wrong person because in my opinion, those guys struggle with expressions too. They've only got about three or four expressions and that's it. Okay, if you're trying to make a, a, something like a Disney expression, then those you yeah, that's something to really struggle with is those guys they understand anatomy of the face so if you don't know the muscles of the face and the bones of the face because the, the those muscles sit within the bone okay the orbicularis oculi sits within the eye orbit okay the the golden boy has real expression and it looked well just ugly yeah but you know what? The, the, the fact of the matter is, is, is at least the, you are looking at, they're looking at expressions and you're identifying it as ugly. But the thing is, is you have to have knowledge of these things in order to accomplish them. So if I do this with my eye on this and go, hey, what are you going to do? This is a typical kind of, uh pixar animation expression let's just low high 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 do this with the eye you know this line here this line here look this you know that's not skill there's nothing good in that you know it's something that's easy and appealing in people and if you want people to look at your drawing and go ah oh, yeah that's really good man because it looks pro man because it, you know it looks pro and that's the only thing they can say about it because you've copied it from a typical 
rush job bro expression, then whatever, you know. The thing is, it goes back to what I said earlier. Like, you can take a horse to the water, but you can't make it drink, you know. So it's just real animated training. I love it, but it really is not for everyone. It's not for everyone because if you're the kind of person who is not willing to do what it to, to do your due diligence, if you're the kind of person who talks about getting a six pack, but is constantly eating junk, and even if you're going to the gym, you're lifting weights, but you're eating shit you ain't going to get a six pack. You can tell yourself you've been to the gym, but if you're not burning the calories, amount of calories that you need to burn, and you're not eating the kind of lean protein that you need to eat, and you're not uh, doing enough cardio to shed the, the, the layer of fat to expose those muscles, and you're just working out, you're doing 100,000 sit-ups a day, you're not going to get the six pack. And when it comes to animation, it's the same thing. You can sit there and say, yeah, I did it. I looked at the anatomy and this and that. And now I'm going to go and carry on trying to draw my anime and copy the anime and copy the anime that I saw here and copy the anime that I saw there. And then you spend about, uh, you know, the, the, the relation of time that you're spending on that. I'm not saying that this is you, Gaurav. I'm just saying... In general, the kind of mentality of a lot of people out there, it's, it's counterproductive. Because unless there is a want, a real want to know, it's not, I've never got an animation job because I've never got to work. I've only ever gotten work because I could get the job done. Absolutely. There we go. As a professional at some point, did you have to revisit the fundamentals? And Andreas, yes. Do you know when I revisited the fundamentals? And look, what I love about real animated training is that it's realer than I even ever thought it would be. Because what it's done is, is I came online as a pro instructing you guys. I came online as a pro teaching you how to be better. And if you look, if you look at my work, my work has categorically become better evidently because I've revisited the fundamentals. When you work in the industry, you get used to doing your own little bag of industry chicks and you get go from one job to the next and you're in a deadline, you know, and that's why a lot of people uh, back, back in their days at Disney were amazing. And now you look at some of them now who I've met, they're not the same because their their peer groups have changed and that kind of work is not in demand anymore. So they're having to work on lower standard stuff. And that was happening to me and I didn't like it. I was storyboarding or even I was getting animation direction jobs. So industry wise, I was going higher, but I was drawing less and I was drawing faster and I was animating less. So I said, you know, so I said, anyway, my passion for hand-drawn animation brought me into uh, start AMB. And I said, okay, well, we got to start with these basics. And I got just as much into it as the people who I were teaching. So, yes, I've revisited the fundamentals when I have decided to start AMB up again because I had to start teaching people again. I had to start teaching people again. So this is how I personally learn anatomy, okay? This stuff is how I personally learn anatomy. I fill up sketchbooks, okay? But then I say, okay, well, how would a beginner do it? I already know this. So how would a beginner do it? So why don't we teach people's turnarounds. Why don't we teach people turnarounds of bones and all those things? Somebody says animation is good. We need to learn shot compositions and things like that. Look, look, this, you can't clump it all together. This is what I'm doing with real animated training. I'm not doing real filmmaker training. Okay. Maybe in the future, maybe in the future. I've only been at this for, for three years. Okay. And the first year I was finding my way. Okay that we had that was called live stream library, AMB live stream library. Look, this is animator training. You can't say, what's the, what, what, the, all these directors and filmmakers, you know why people make a big deal about the actor? Oh, 
Filmmakers like us might say, oh, the actor is so overrated. What about the cinematographer? What about the uh, production designer? What about the art director? Yes, that's all true. But the actor is what the public like. The actor is communicating the message to the public. And the public will go and see a film because of an actor. So you cannot sit there and say, the animation is not that important. We need to learn shot composition and this and that. Yes, as a filmmaker, yes. Absolutely. 100% I agree with you. But what the real animator training library is, is training people to be animators, training people to be actors with a pencil or through the medium of animation. Express character. Express the illusion of life. Okay? The new series that I'm doing on Real Animator Freeview on YouTube about the the Little Red Riding Hood thing, that's a little bit different. That's talking about filmmaking and it's touching on the things you're talking about, but that's not animator stuff. You see, this is another thing when people go, YouTube animators, animator, animator, they think this word animator means everything. No, animator is just the guy that moves the characters or does the makes the movement, creates the illusion of life and all this and that. You need to know, you know, you've got storyboard artists, you've got art directors on an animation movie, you've got all these, like, you've got editors, you've got all these people that exist in the animation movie world, what exists in the live action film movie world. So if you say, if you step back there and say, uh, Tom Cruise uh, uh, is, a, is a director, he's a, he's a cinematographer, Tom Cruise is a cinematographer, is he? Tom Cruise is a script writer, is he? Tom Cruise is a com composer, is he? Nonsense. So the thing is, is this is people need to, this is why I've started this thing is to educate people about simple terms, you know? So just to, and, and this is really what it is to make animation special again, because it can't all be lumped into this one thing that the guy who just draws does it all. You know, it's not that. It isn't about the guy who just does this. Thank you, Lily Chan. See you later. I appreciate you taking time to teach for me. Uh, missed a comment. Thank you. So the, the important thing to understand about all of this is that if you are going to make a film, it takes a lot. It's a collaborative thing, or even if it's not a collaborative thing, you need to understand the filmmaking process. Now, animation is a subgenre of filmmaking. You see, animation is a form of filmmaking. The animator is not necessarily a filmmaker. When I switched from being an animator to a storyboard artist, I made the switch. A lot of other, other animators couldn't because they could only think in flat drawing, character posing terms and stuff like that. So they had no sense of uh, dramatis, dramatic staging, uh, shot composition. I was fortunate to, to be interested in filmmaking too when I was young and to, to, to be studying live action, David Lean, Sergio Leone, Ridley Scott, all these live action films. My brother ha was interested in filmmaking. He had all the screen craft books on cinematography and all that, so I would read them. Uh, script writing. Uh, so I was interested in that stuff. So I kind of fell into it and it kind of gelled for me. But a lot of animators don't think like that because it's not, it's a different discipline entirely. So you, you need to understand what is what. And just because you're learning one thing, you're learning that thing to be good at that thing. Okay. So that's what, uh, the, when, I, when AMB animation at the moment, in the phase where we're at now, okay, we are just focusing on animator, which is, we are touching on other things, which I'm giving you free. That stuff that I'm giving free is, is, is useful, and I know that it's helping people, and that's what I want to do, but it's not the kind of stuff that if I was going to make a serious course and charge people money for, I personally, there are people who would charge money for that kind of material. There are people who would. And I think, actually, it's good material. So, yeah, but, but my standards, knowing what I've done with real animator training, I, I feel I'm half-assing it. I'm just going over it too quickly for you. So the time will come. 
um, when I will uh, move into a pre-production library. We will learn about storyboarding. We will learn about adapting a script um, into images. We will learn about uh, cinematography, production design, staging. Maybe I'll be able to bring in some of my friends to do some of their courses who are a bit more, you know, my, my background is storyboard, but maybe the background aspect, uh, stuff like that, to do a lot of that stuff. Don't worry, a lot of professional story, but it's not about the drawing. Um, but it depends what uh, Zentron, it depends, okay? Um, I, I could say, yes, there are a lot of professional storyboard artists who don't draw well, but the same said for anything. The same said for animators. There's a lot of animators who don't draw well. You know what? Brad Bird was, a, was an animator before he was a director, and even he admitted he didn't draw well. So that comment doesn't really quite uh, accomplish anything, you know? The, 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 the fact of the matter is, is I'm not interested in not doing anything well. That's not what AMB animation is about. AMB animation is always about expressing yourself to the highest ideal, okay? The highest ideal, making it, bringing, creating a community, creating uh, uh, a generation of artists who do things to such a high standard that they set the standard uh, and inspire others to, to rise up to that standard, you know? And I've always believed this. And one of the things that makes me really happy in my heart is when my training library started attracting professionals. Um, the other day on my Facebook, on the AMB Facebook page, I got a comment from the head of animation in a Greek animation studio. The head of his team, the team of animation in the Greek animation studio, because I checked him out. I checked out because I said, what kind of comment is that? I shared my Little Red Riding Hood, my free stuff, on my Facebook page. And I got a comment. No, not, not the Little Red Riding Hood, the Looney Tunes, the, the breakdown of Yosemite Sam. That's a free stream. I shared it on my Facebook page and I got a comment from a head of animation. He says, I just shared this video with my team. And I said, oh, thank, it's my pleasure. Thank you. I'm glad it was helpful. But I said, shared it with his team. Is he an instructor somewhere? Or is that? So I, I just briefly looked at his page. And he's a creative head of a department in an animation studio in Greece. And this makes me immensely pleased because what I'm doing is, is what I envisaged. It's to bring quality back into animation, into 2D animation. It's to, it's to help those who want to be helped up their game. And, you know, it just makes me immensely pleased. Uh, to be able to share that and to be able to have people ask me, AMB, how many people have you produced that have gone into the industry? I say, it's not how many people who have gone into the industry I've produced, it's how many people in the industry who have come to me. That's the question that you should be thinking about. And that makes me immensely satisfied because that's what it's all about. It's about making, focusing on the animator aspect this is professional, not clumping it all together and just saying animator means you're everything under the sun. No, because it's a tailorized industry. It's, it's specialist. So it's focusing on that. We have you on a big screen in our studio and a bunch of us tuned in. Director says hi. <laughs> really? Oh, hello. Hello. I just, uh, uh, thank you. Um, it's just, what can I say? It's immensely moving for me to to be in that in that case and i think this is the person who made the comment about the cinematography and i i absolutely agree with the comment that you made but i have to take it one step at a time i have to take it one step at a time which is i have to focus on yes i'm I, my strengths are in storyboard but i was an animator first before i was a storyboard artist and I'm more passionate about 
storyboard is always going to be good. Even in movies, the movie industry is not to my taste today, but I still see amazing storyboard being done. I don't think the storyboard world is in a crisis at the moment. I think the 2D animation world is in a crisis. I think I really do. I think the 2D animation, we've got the amazing Sergio Pablos doing things. And it's not just me. This is what I love about the beauty of the mastermind concept. We might, I might not know him. He might not know me. I might not know Aaron Blaze. Aaron Blaze might not know me. But the thing is, is there's a group of us out there that are creating ripples with hand-drawn animation. And we're going to end that crisis. We're going we're gonna to make animation special again. Whether we do it together or whether we do it individually, I don't fucking care. We're going to change this. That's what it's about. That's what, my, that's what my passion and my energy is going towards that. So I'm focusing, um, I'm almost, you know, the training library is not complete yet. It's almost complete. A lot of people think it's complete. And I would say, yes, it is complete, but it's not complete by my standards. There's one more thing, the uh, group of courses that I really need to get out there I can keep adding to it till till the end of my life, to be honest with you. But there's one thing that I really need to finish in there, and that's to build a muscle archive. And once I've done that, then, I, you know, it already is the most complete system out there. Uh, but once once I've put the muscle archive in there, then I'll be able to say fully, yes, you know, um, there's nothing in there that you're going to feel that hasn't been covered. Um, I cover muscles and things and shapes, but it's, it's, it, I want to give it the full course that I've given with the, uh, with the bones. I want to do that for muscles. That's, that's, that's the thing that... And then after that, we can start thinking about other aspects of the animation field um, and doing pre-production storyboard layout um stuff like that so absolutely awesome okay my throat is dry i have absolutely loved this uh coming online um giving this stream uh some coming in front of the camera finally I, it was on the back of my mind and um yeah i think uh we've talked for long enough now um i'm so grateful that i've had 50 people in my audience just listening to my face you know that's more than sometimes when I have my drawing bad going on <laughs> so so or my Cintiq so appreciate that um I always hesitate to do these streams because I I sometimes think you want to just watch me draw and explain away so um thank you for giving me your time and just for sitting down and, and spending that time with me. I, I, I really appreciate that. And we'll do it again sometime. We'll do it again when I get another uh, uh, long question that I need to answer. And then I'll come online and we'll answer some questions. Thank you very much, Red Fox. Thank you, everybody. You're going to see my finger come up and press a button because I'm on my phone now. Um, I don't know if the camera makes any difference. I've gone and got myself a brand spanking new phone because I think... It's just easier than using a GoPro or one of those cameras and uh, it can go instantly live. And um, on top of that, uh, yeah, if you're going to be on the Internet, you might as well have a higher definition or whatever. <laughs> so there we go. <laughs> OK, then. Thanks for making me laugh. Some of you appreciate it all. And I'll see you all on the next one. AMB signing out. Over and out. Bye bye. Okay, how do we do this? I'm pressing the screen. This is funny. Okay, how do I end my stream? Okay, no. Does anybody know how to end? Maybe I press this cross here. This is even funny. This is a funny stream. Okay, see you later, people. Are you sure that you want to stop streaming? Yes, I do. Okay, I thought I knew how to do this. <laughs> see you later. Bye-bye.